Paul's wacky skip to another bizarre way of getting around. Uh, yes, Carys Griffiths is taking her life into her hands again tonight. She's been racing down roads at 60 miles an hour on what appears to be a plank of wood with four wheels attached to it. Even worse, it doesn't have any brakes. It's a new sport called street luging, but we're not sure it's going to catch on, and you'll see why in this week's License to Thrill. knows how it started or indeed who started it. All we do know is that about 20 years ago in America, someone decided to invent a very large skateboard which you lie flat on your back on and ride very fast down very steep hills. John Marr and Chris Beard are among just a handful of people in this country who take part in the sport of street luge and they build their machines here in their garage in Manchester. A lot of them are built from an aluminium chassis um, which is folded and the centre section is, is dropped so that it gets your body and the centre of gravity a lot closer to the, to the ground. I suppose it's the, um, the simplicity of it really, in that you're not relying on anything to speed you down the hill other than gravity, it's as simple as that. John and Chris took up the sport last summer after reading about it in a magazine. Well, the average is about 60 mile an hour. Um, but I think the record at the moment is about 81 maximum. Um, but once you get above 60 miles an hour, things uh, start to get more aerodynamic and just moving a hand out will sort of upset the balance or turn you one way or the other. Um, and you, you know you're doing those speeds because things are starting to, to move pretty quick. John has competed at the extreme games in America and both have been to races in Austria. But even on a quiet road with a gentle slope, accidents do happen. You all right there, then, John? How did yeah, that go? yeah, I think so. I think all the gear has Protects done its you job. Well. What happened, you know? I think I must have hit maybe the manhole cover up there, and uh, it just, you know, started getting. It was like a tank slapper on a motorcycle, and I couldn't get it back. And then I know I flew over once, and I tried to, I tried to lay as flat as I can, so I'd slide rather than keep tumbling. And the, I know the chin guard on here actually ground right across the surface of the road. It's probably... It looks like you've cut your that. thumbs a bit, yeah. But apart from probably that, just caught my uh, mouth on the... Any other bumps and bruises? This elbow, I think. I think it's gone through. So lucky. <laughs> we got away with it. It looks horrifying. You bounced well, though, John. <laughs> I, tried, I tried not to bounce. I wanted to slide, not bounce. But... Yeah, I, t I think I tumbled over at least once, but no doubt you got it on there. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lesson for us all. Street luge can be dangerous. You need to remember three golden rules. Never do it on a public road, never do it without proper safety equipment, and never do it in the rain because you won't be able to stop. Right, I've got the leathers, the body armour, the crash helmet. I've even got the street luge. There's just one thing that's bothering me now. I can't see where the brakes are. John, where are the brakes? You've got them on your feet already. The trainers? Yep. <laughs> How do they work then? Well, when you need to stop, um, take your feet off the foot pegs, plant them into the road surface, and friction will slow you down. Obviously, after a short time, um, that you'll wear straight through that and wreck the shoes, have to throw right. them away. Um, the alternative is to take a piece of truck rubber like that, yeah. see it's quite thick, glue that onto the sole of the shoe, and uh, when this starts to wear through before you get into the shoe, peel it off, stick on another piece. In a race situation, to go as fast as possible, you need to be lay as flat as right. you can. In that sort of position? Yeah. Now, starting off at the front here, on the foot pegs, 
much like the ice luges, to, the most aerodynamic position is to try and point, point your toes as far forward as possible. That's right, with the, the sort of in together like that. That's right. So how do I steer? It's, it's purely lean steered, uh, much like a skateboard. Basically, if you if you lean off to one side, yeah, the wheels front and rear will will twist. So it's fo it's four wheel steering, and <laughs> the you know the 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 tighter the corner the more you need to crank, the more you need to get more weight transferred over to the side you want to turn to. Now I know this looks a bit of a wimpy slope, but you've got to take things slowly to begin with. There it goes. Oh no! Straight <laughs> right onto the verge. If at first you're pretty rubbish, try, try again. How am I doing, John? That was that was excellent. Was that the for, best one? For a, for a couple of runs, um, a lot of people for the first few runs, they just haven't got the confidence to pick the feet up. Yeah, you make a good street loser. <laughs> They're not the words I wanted to hear. <laughs> I want to give up now and retire. <laughs> but as John and Chris are always looking for a bigger and better slope, so did I. We're looking out all the time to find a hill that's on a closed road that's got smooth tarmac and it, it, we, can, we can get up to speeds of 60 miles an hour so that we can train and race on them. That will be much better for all the UK guys that want to, or girls even, that want to go and race against um, Americans ne at next year's X Games. And for my very final trick, a very steep, very bendy slope. felt like a near-death experience, so fast, wobbling around, I couldn't see anything. Look, look at that, I had my heels down virtually all the way. There's one almost through. That's it, it's last time. I enjoyed it, but the last time. If a speeding luge is up your street, here's how to get involved. Well done, Kareth. Rather you than...